welcome everybody. AC and Isaac here with episode 91. It's a duo cast. Um, we're going to talk about the past few months. It's late summer, early fall here in central New York, and it's finally raining. It's been raining, yeah, a lot. Yeah. And the leaves are changing. They are. It's definitely early fall now. We've passed the, the equinox. I'm wearing a sweater and a flannel and a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got highs in the 60s. <laughs> yeah, maybe but, I'm being a little dramatic with my layers, but I don't want to be cold. Yeah, it's been it hasn't been very sunny lately. Yeah, which is a total difference than the the whole summer. It's been a drought and no rain and super dry, super sunny, pretty much all summer. But now we're getting really dumped on, which is a good thing. Yeah, so it's been a good summer um, as far as like projects go. Uh, we've been very, very busy and we had been doing just uh, one episode a week. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we're getting back into that. No, we've been doing one episode every two weeks and now we're getting back into one episode a week. Right. Uh, so hopefully we can keep that up. We've got, you know, still got a lot of things going on. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes we bite off more than we can chew. Um, but, mm -hmm. but I like having a lot of things to do. I like, you know, moving from this thing to that thing and, you know, working on the garden one day or one mm -hmm. hour and then working on my studies or working on the podcast. There's, you know, I like a variety of things to do. Yeah. So it's definitely been busy. Um, mm -hmm. But speaking of your studies, congratulations, Isaac, on graduating from your Christopher Warnock Astrology School. Thanks. Yeah. So I did, I did that. Um, I, I could, I guess I can call myself an astrologer now. That's what I'm sure you can, it's up to everybody who, when they consider themselves an astrologer, but be, I'm, well, I, I'll, I'll consider myself a student of astrology yeah. forever. Yeah. But, um, I, I have been doing, uh, doing readings or consultations, um, mainly horary so far, but I want to be moving into doing natals too. Um, but I'm, I'm starting with just, you know, friends and, and family and so on. And then getting getting the hang of it before uh, offering it to the public but if you do want a horror reading which is like a uh, it's like a tarot reading but more precise um and it can be very like cut and dry and you know yes or no it's <laughs> Whereas, more of a divination yeah you know you like, ask a question and yeah. then you answer the question based on the chart for the moment you understand the question yeah so i'm offering those currently and so, so yeah, I finished uh, Christopher Warnock's courses, um, and those were uh, really good. I highly recommend them. We're going to be having him on the show again soon, and he's going to be speaking at the Astromagia conference, which is next week. So oh, I think the eighth, yeah. ninth, and tenth. Um, and there's going to be a lot of really great speakers uh, at that, and I'm going to be speaking at it. So it's my yeah. first first conference that I'm speaking at. Uh, and we're talking about uh, the secrets of the 17th century astrological doctors. So we're talking about the, those astrologer physicians of the 17th century and a little bit 16th century, like uh, Joseph Blagrave and uh, William Lilly. He was actually also a physician. Um, and of course, Nicholas Culpepper, mm -hmm. uh, who is who's the, 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 who wrote the famous herbal. Culpepper's herbal. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the astrologer physician was a, was a common job description back then. And we get into a little bit about that context and give you some secrets. So, yeah, yeah. it's like, his, it's sort of a historical talk, but Isaac has really done a good job of making the visuals beautiful for the slideshow and making it funny. So <laughs> I hope so. I'm excited for it. Yeah, it's been fun to like look up the uh, all those old Renaissance images and like find pictures mm -hmm. of Blagrave and Lily and Culpepper and uh, yeah, Simon Foreman. And yeah. there's a couple of portraits that are like drawings of the face of Culpepper or whatever. And then the chart is drawn by hand around their head. And there's like a whole series of those photos yeah. or drawings that Isaac found that are really cool. I think they're from Ebenezer Sibley, who is a 19th, mm -hmm. early 19th century. Uh, a late 18th century, early 19th century astrologer. Um, he wrote the chart for the the founding of the U.S. The Sibley chart, which is uh, the most commonly used 
uh, natal chart for the U.S., which is interesting. But I think yeah, those are from how him. I know yeah. that name. Yeah. Okay. So the astrology has been fun. I've been obsessed with it. I hope that all of you <laughs> listeners who are just in it for the plants don't get too um, annoyed with me because I'm doing we're doing so many astrology podcasts episodes. But I, I we have like a number of different audiences. You know, yeah. like we have the more esoteric stuff. We have the more plant stuff. We have permaculture. Um, so you know, just listen to the ones that you like. Yeah. And we appreciate all the listeners. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, and of course, I, I, I know if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that. We just have a small following there so far. Um, and if you're on uh, listening to this on like Apple uh, or whatever, Spotify or yeah, whatever, g- give like a review. Please give us like four or five stars or whatever is good. And a, and a comment. Those are those are really helpful for yeah. getting people to listen. Mm. Um, but anyway, to go back to the astrology, I'm now studying uh, at Judith Hill's. A, a academy uh studying um medical astrology so that's very exciting too so i've done the christopher warnock renaissance astrology now I'm moving on to the medical astrology and it's all very very fun and very, very interesting and uh judith hill is another person that i would highly recommend we interviewed her um and her episodes are actually some of our uh more popular ones um mm-hmm. and she's doing really good work she's had a, a many decades of experience and she's just so knowledgeable about stuff mm-hmm. so maybe we should talk about plants now yeah let's talk about astrology. plants <laughs> <laughs> yeah so usually we do like a little report for our listeners about you know what's happening in the garden and on the homestead and what's been exciting for us what's doing well um but as we mentioned before this was a drought year so a lot of things that normally do do okay up here just like didn't do so well for us because we only irrigated the greenhouse. Um, we didn't irrigate the field. So it was kind of like, okay, we're going to plant you sink or swim. Um, and so the corn this year was this beautiful heirloom seed that we got from our neighbors down the road, the Amish neighbors. And it was like a dark red, beautiful corn. And it did not really do the thing. Well, yeah, I planted it too close together. I didn't th- uh, thin it. Uh, I think the soil also could have used some more fertility. Mm. Um, it was potatoes last year. I definitely should have added more fertility before oh, yeah. I put them in. Too closely planted, didn't get enough water. And they were kind of, we have a, a short season. Yeah. So they just. <laughs> but they did produce some, you know, small, literally baby corn sized yeah corn so if you pick if you pick the corn when it's still very very small it's baby corn you know yeah and it's I'm, really good i usually don't like baby corn maybe because it's usually canned or something mm, and yeah. pickled or whatever but this fresh baby corn is actually so good and isaac made this incredible dish the other day that was like a rice with um venison cubes broccoli a soy sauce delicious garlic pepper um sauce and baby corn yeah i, I liked onion. it it was so good it was so good so anyway if, um if your corn doesn't mature <laughs> if your corn doesn't mature pick the baby corn and then now i've got all this silk from the corn yeah. as well so the silk um is sort of like some of them are gold some of them are bright red so i've never had like a bright red corn silk before for medicine and i dry it out for tea blends or for smoking blends it burns really well if you're doing an herbal smoke mix, it kind of is like tobacco or it's stringy and long. And so it burns evenly, you know, mixed in with other herbs. Um, and then it's great for UTIs for, um, tea blends. So I'm excited about the corn silk. So even though there wasn't a great giant corn crop, um, the silk is actually worth more to me. So I was excited about that. And it's hard to find organic corn silk. Yeah, that's important. I mean, corn really isn't like, you know, there's a lot of corn. <laughs> we can get corn. <laughs> you can get sweet corn anywhere, but it's yeah. not going to be organic around here. And this wasn't even a sweet corn. This was a uh, meal, you know, for, for corn meal. Mm. Um, and it was kind of just an experiment. Yeah. Um, Cause we don't really, so we did do the thing that did well were, were sweet potatoes and potatoes. Yeah. So as far as staple crops go, those did really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and we actually, well, we got a greenhouse the big greenhouse, a hoop house with the USDA grant. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit? The grant or, or the yeah, house? the grant and the hoop house. Cause I mean, that was yeah. a big thing this summer too. Yeah. We applied for it as soon as we moved in, um, in 20, 
20, basically in the winter of 2020. And, um, after a few years of being on the wait list and, you know, paperwork going back and forth between the office, the NRCS office and us, um, we eventually got approved and we were able to purchase the hoop house. And then we got it up officially in like May of this year. So it took a few years to do it. So if anybody's interested in the NRCS hoop house grant program, you can apply to it at the um, local USDA office, which is usually in like the building where your DMV and county clerk and all that is. Um, and just expect it to be, you know, a couple year process. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah, but it's worth it because then you get reimbursed for your greenhouse purchase. And um, yeah, we were able to plant it and it did so well this year. It was definitely like the highlight of our whole growing experience this year because it was such a drought. Everything else was just looking really dry. And since we watered the hoop house, um, we had kale that was up to our chest. We had red amaranth that was like reaching the top of the hoop house. I mean, it's still, it, the, it's still there. It's yeah. still there. Yeah. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it is so beautiful. And we eat the fresh shoots of the red amaranth for greens, but we actually just call them reds because they're red. Um, like a dark, like purple, magenta. Red. It's amazing. They've got to have a lot of antioxidants in them. Yeah. And they are so buttery. It's kind of like spinach, but without that, like slippery sort of like tacky mouthfeel that spinach can sometimes leave on your teeth. Amaranth is just straight buttery. Um, so yeah, we love that. And then the ashwagandha that we planted in the greenhouse did awesome. Um, and we were following the tip that we, we learned. Um, yeah. About uh, not watering the amaranth of uh, the uh, ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. um, we had Ben uh, from Rasa. Rasa on. He talked about how the ashwagandha has more uh, of the good compounds in it if it's if it's in a drought in a situation. Drought, yeah. So with the greenhouse, we can like manage what what gets watered and mm -hmm. what doesn't. So it's yeah. been uh, it's done really well, and it hasn't gotten as much water as everything else has gotten barely any water yeah. and it's just an amazing. Yeah. And you can kind of tell with the leaves, they look like they look different than when they're, they're fully watered like as much. And I, I you know, I, I think it is probably more potent, mm -hmm. uh, but Ben sa says that it definitely is. So I, I, I trust him. <laughs> yeah. And then another thing in the greenhouse that did really well was the spilanthes or oh, yeah, plant. Yeah. And I love uh, making a mouthwash or throat spray with spilanthes tincture. Um, just the alcohol extract of the fresh splanthes flower and the leaves. I used to just use the flower, but the leaves actually have a lot of flavor and um, they do the same sort of mouth experience of making you salivate and tingling and numbing sort of like the way that a clove essential oil drop on a gum might be like tingly and numbing or kava kava or echinacea. It's like that same kind of vibe, but more so. Um, so it's definitely one of those plants that you have somebody try and they can't deny that herbs don't have an effect. You know, it just yeah. like immediately makes your mouth water and um, numb for a few minutes. <laughs> so Splanthes did great in there. Yeah. And the sweet potatoes and uh, greens and so on. Current I mean, tomatoes. Current tomatoes also. That was another yeah. thing. We got those. They're from Joseph Lofthouse, who we interviewed. And they're a wild cherry tomato. So they've got a lot more genetic diversity within them. Uh, they've got a lot more of the good stuff, a lot of the, the antioxidants and so on. And they're so, they're small. They're very small. They're like a blueberry. A little bigger than a blue. Well, like yeah. a fat blueberry. A fat, yeah, but they're really, really good. Um, <clears throat> they're really tasty. You can kind of take the whole, um, like. Top of the vine. Top of the. What, Kind of looks like a grapevine where yeah. you just have all these cluster. little tomatoes. It's like a cluster. cluster. Yeah. And it looks like currants, actually. Mm -hmm. But those did really well, too. Um, and we have a really kind of a short season up here. So having a, a hoop house like that is, is really a game changer as far as being able to grow stuff like peppers and tomatoes and sweet potatoes and ashwagandha. Probably just going to do like half ashwagandha next year because it does so well in there. And it's sort of like more valuable than any of the other things. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, but the, yeah, the, the hoop house was, was a 
definitely a big thing this 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 year. Took a lot of work getting it up. It's seventy by thirty. It's pretty big. It's like a whole by 30. thing. It's a big, big, big building. <laughs> and we planted our winter greens uh, yeah. in late August, and so we've got some turnip greens now coming up, and some spinach and arugula and kale, more kale. More kale. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be nice to go in there when there's snow on the ground and still harvest greens, which is such a treat. And, and Tulsi did really well in there, mm-hmm. um, but outside Tulsi did not do so well. well yeah, I think I planted it and it was cold. It was still cold in like end of May. Yeah. Uh, we actually got sick at the end of May <laughs> for like two weeks and it was right during planting season. Mm-hmm. And so we were a little bit late on some stuff. <laughs> But yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff did really well. So. Yeah. The milky oats did really well this year. We got about four gallons of tincture from our milky oats, as well as our friend Kate's at Weathertop Farm, who we've interviewed early on in the podcast. She um, grows organic herbs and had like a whole field of milky oats. That was just, I didn't even make a dent in it and harvest it as much as I possibly could. And then I was processing it with three friends for three days after that. It was a yeah. scene in my kitchen, <laughs> my, yeah. my apothecary kitchen. It was just like surfaces were covered with milky oats and you're just breaking it down off the stem and blending it up with the tincture. Cause you really do have to blend it when you're making a fresh milky oats tincture. Cause there's a pretty hard, it's not really hard, but it's like a fibrous um, shell. And then you really want the like milky stuff on the inside there. So to break that shell open, you got to blend it. And so it was a whole scene, but I got your milky oats tincture and Lord knows we all need that. It's a great yeah. nervine. It's, you know, good for coating the myelin sheath on the nerves. So for anyone who has that frayed nerve feeling, you can take milky oats uh, regularly. It works best if you take it every day for like months. It's a tonic. It's not something that you just take like one and done and you feel better. It's something you take over time, but um, yeah, definitely hit me up. If you need some milky oats tincture you can go to traveling and, and order some there if you want. Yeah. And so another thing that was, that was important this summer <laughs> is uh, the lawn, the lawn mowing, right? So we did actually through July, we didn't have to mow at all uh, because it was so <laughs> droughty. Um, but so I have, we have this riding lawn mower and it, it we got it used and uh it's it just keeps breaking like every time i fix something then something else breaks um and i was just like man I, I, screw it you know um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know i like we have a lot of areas we don't mow as much as most of our neighbors do we have we have a little bit of lawn we have paths um and it is very nice to have short grass in those paths so when you're walking barefoot you know there's not like grass up to your shins or whatever <laughs> or uh plantain seed heads or whatever mm-hmm. um yeah so i mean while i understand people who don't mow that's fine you know do do you do i understand people who do mow that's fine do what you do i like to you know have some mowing <laughs> like paths <laughs> paths yeah. and, and a little bit of lawn um but i so i finally realized hey i should get a scythe i've been wanting a scythe forever Hey, hey, <laughs> make some hay. Um, so finally was able to get a scythe. I got a nice new Austrian scythe um, and it works really well for tall green grass. And it's really good for like mulching. It's it's good to, to make hay to mulch with. It's not necessarily as good for like lawn mowing as some people say it is. I mean, maybe if you're really skilled with it, uh, you can do that. But um, well, there's also this thing called the reel mower, right? It's an old push mower. R E E L. R E E L. It's a reel, and it's a push mower. And I, my, like my parents used to have one that they never used it, um, but all of our Amish neighbors have them, and that's what they use to mow their lawns. And and then my other neighbor wh- said, "Why don't you just get a reel mower?" And I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> why don't I just get a reel mower? <laughs> so it's like a hundred bucks uh, shipped, and it requires no gasoline or oil or anything you have to sharpen it like once a year um 
and you get a great aerobic workout. So <laughs> <laughs> it might take a little longer, uh, but it actually, you know, you get more of a workout, which I, I it's important to get, I, I do a lot of strength stuff and, uh, but it's really important to have aerobic exercise in your, in your, in your routine. And you're so, not about to just like go for a run. I'm not going to go for a run. I'm never going to just go for a run. I'm <laughs> way too kafa. Like, no, but <laughs> I'll hike, I'll, you know, hike. hiking, but even when I'm hiking, like, I don't know, I don't do things for fun. So. <laughs> like I like to have a, a yeah. reason to do stuff. So like, I like to go out looking for mushrooms or mm -hmm. foraging or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I do like hiking sometimes too, but there's just so many, so much to get done. So like I have to have like a reason to do everything. Yeah. So incorporating something that gets you exercise into your work routine works for you. Right. And, and the uh, real mower does, and it actually works really well. Yeah. So I'm very and happy it with that. It makes a gorgeous cut. Like it, yeah. the lawn looks great. Yeah. And so both the scythe and the, the real mower together are less than like a, a riding way less than a riding lawn, lawnmower like a new riding lawnmower those things are expensive and then we have a weed whacker for kind of like the edges or for yeah. like things that are getting really tall and big like goldenrod or something and i want to i want to um move away from that and use more of the scythe for all of that and we also did get a tractor a small tractor that was my granddad's this summer and uh needs there, there's some fixes that need to happen i'm working on it but um that will have a big like thing for like large amounts of, of, of hay uh, and grass for cutting. So that might be helpful too, but I want to be able to do a lot of the stuff gas free, you know, because looking at into a low energy future, just looking at the gas prices this summer, I think that's kind of, it's, they're going to get they're They're lower now, but it's just going to keep getting higher and higher over the years. So I want to get used to using hmm. the gas free uh, and stay tools. buff. And stay buff. Yes. Stay, stay uh, healthy. Yeah. So, so that, that's my lawn mowing journey this year. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend real mowers for a small lawn. That's all you need. And uh, for a big lawn, you just, you need that and time uh, <laughs> and energy mm -hmm. <laughs> or like children, mm -hmm. <laughs> our Amish, our Amish neighbors, they just have their kids do it. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's no sound. That's the other nice thing. Oh, yeah. Like when you're using a, 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 a motorized mower, the sound is kind of, I mean, some people like it, but to me, it is kind of grating with the scythe. It's really a wonderful, like shearing sound. Mm. And with the, uh, the, the real mower, there's barely any sound. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. You'd like be part of, of nature. So you also had some, you had some fun things this summer. You did a lot of, uh, women's gatherings. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I did three women's gatherings. Um, this summer, there was a local wild woman retreat and I was a, um, presenter, I guess I did a song circle there where I made a little zine or a pamphlet of some of the songs that I've learned over the years traveling and, at um women's gatherings or rainbow gatherings or red tents or um just fireside on the road at different communities so that was really exciting and I'd never done anything like that where I've like led a, a song share but I do it kind of casually around the fire just like with friends or you know traveling on on my school bus we're always singing because the radio never worked so um you know, I'm, I'm used to singing a lot, but that was definitely pushing my edge a little bit. And then I did that again. I did another song share and led like a, a fire circle, um, for the radiant moon gathering in the Adirondacks, which was another small, beautiful women's retreat in the mountains in the Adirondacks at the bark eater Inn. And then in between that, uh, those two gatherings, I went to the Botanic Wise Herbal Conference and I've been working with Botanic Wise, like employed by Botanic Wise for a few years. And I finally got to meet my bosses um, who run Botanic Wise, Cara Slindruth and Abby. And it was really cool to um, get to hang out with them and meet their families and friends and the community there. It was a beautiful conference and I got to meet one of my herb heroes, Rosita Arvigo, who we interviewed last year. Um, and that was just like, it, it was an, a, a beautiful 
experience, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, meeting Rosita was definitely the cherry on top. So yeah, this was just, just like a summer of, um, really dropping into, I don't know, like the, the spiritual side of herbalism more, because all those gatherings are like great for connecting with the heart of herbalism rather than just the head. Cause often we can get, you know, stuck in the, the science and the plant compounds and the constituents and the, you know, the way that they interact with our body. But <clears throat> when you connect with other plant people, um, in, at these gatherings, it's just really special and it flexes different muscles basically. So that was really cool. Yeah. So I guess that's most of the summer so far. Mm -hmm. Um, what are, what are you excited for? I know we've, we've got, uh, some really great, uh, interviews coming up. We've got, uh, Christopher Hobbs, who is an amazing mycologist and herbalist. Yeah, I have his book right here on our desk, actually. Yeah, we're going to interview him today, actually. It won't be, a, probably be a few weeks before we uh, put that episode out. We've also got uh, another episode with um, another Christopher, <laughs> Christopher Warnock, uh, my astrology teacher. Um, he's got a new book out, uh, and we've got uh, Margie Flint on the uh, agenda, and Byron Ballard. That's going to be a lot later, but yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of other fun guests coming up, so... Yeah. Another forecast, astro astro astrology forecast with Zamboni Funk in December that yeah. we'll do like a year ahead swap cast because he has a podcast as, as well now. So yeah, excited about that. So what about the farm? Anything else exciting? Just I can't wait for winter. <laughs> yeah, we've got our wood, we've got our wood stove. Um, and uh be oh, I guess the other thing is um, the reason I can't wait for winter is because this is like my busiest season for markets yeah. and there's um, like fall harvest markets and then holiday markets from basically October through the end of December. And um, I'll be at the Walktoberfest in the Hudson Valley this weekend. So if anybody is listening to this uh, and wants to come visit me, I'll be in the Poughkeepsie Highland area from noon to five Saturday and Sunday, October 1st and 2nd, 2022. Yeah. Yeah. The summer has been busy with a lot of projects and so on, but right now is also like extremely busy. We are harvesting all of our own stuff. Um, we're harvesting for multiple like friends. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, yeah. We'll, we'll talk. And, uh, there's a lot, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on. Got a lot of markets. Yep. Conferences. Yeah. But it's, it's all ex very exciting. So Thank you all so much for listening and thank yeah. you again for liking and sharing with your friends and subscribing. It's a, you know, really helpful way to get, you know, our, our podcast out there to the world. Yeah. We're still small and intimate. So help us to grow. Yeah. And uh, if, if you have listened this far and you want to comment uh, about what your, what you, how your summer was. Yeah. Um, drop a comment. Yeah, let us know. We love hearing from you guys. Yeah. Bye. Okay, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>